Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. There's a common thought in the world that Christ died for all nations. But here you have a nation or a woman from a different nation that's crying for help that he refused to help. Read. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Read that part again. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What did Christ just say? He said he is not sent, but meaning only to the house of Israel. Meaning what? God only sent him to the house of Israel. That's right. Do you understand that? But in the church, they teach something different. You said you had, what, a 14-year-old and a 7-year-old, right? And then I remember you said something about you feeling lonely in this world, even in your own community, right? So what the, what the brother is bringing out, these things that we go through are afflictions from God because we broke God's commandments. I'm going to show you something. Give me Lamentations chapter 1 and verse 6. I'm going to show you you in the Bible. Lamentations chapter 1 and verse 6. And from the daughter of Zion, all her beauty is departed. So God says the daughter of Zion, who is the daughter of Zion? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians, the Israelites, according to the Bible. All right. It says all of her beauty has departed from her. Right. This is going into that reproach that we have today. When you examine our people, a lot of us are down and out. Right. Some of us are homeless. We're on the streets. Okay. Uh, our beauty is not exhorted in the air, in, in the world. They say that the, the standard of beauty is blue-eyed, blonde hair. So what do our women put in their hair? Blonde weave, right? Okay. They put on contacts and it be blue, right? Our people, I say our hair is nappy. It's nigger hair. It's nappy hair, right? So our beauty, our standard of beauty, our reputation has fallen, right? Read on. Her princes are become like hearts. Meaning our chief men have become a, as hearts. A heart is a deer, right? Watch this. That find no pasture. That find what? That find no pasture. That find no pasture. You know what a pasture is? A pasture is a company of other deers, right? So if the chief men are like hearts without no pasture, what are they? Strain alone. They feel alone in this world. They have no strength because when you're in a pack, there's strength, right? That's why a lot of young brothers, they come together, we form gangs, we form mobs, and we walk with our brothers. We, we that. You know what I'm saying? There's strength when there's unity. But because our people are not unified and we find no pasture, we walk through this world alone. Come on. And they are gone without strength before the pursuer. See that? We're gone without strength. Why? Because we have no unity. We have no pasture before the pursuer. The pursuer is our enemy. That's why a lot of times we get gunned down in the street, right? And there's no justice because there's no strength in us. We have no political might. We have no economic might. And we have no military might. You understand? Come on. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction. And of her miseries, all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old. So back then, we were able to remember all of our pleasant things that we had in the days of old. We had thriving communities, right? Black Wall Street. You understand? Tulsa, Oklahoma, right? We had many communities, even, even in Harlem, Brooklyn, okay? We had many strong communities, black communities, where we were in strength, where we had pasture, right? Remember those days, those days in the days of our affliction, when we were being afflicted by our, by our enemies, right? Come on. When her people fell into the hand of the enemy, and none did help her. And none helped us. How was, how, did we get any help when the white man was lynching our children? Remember Emmett Till? Did we get any help for that? Or when they was going into our homes? And snatching up our women or snatching up any of our people when we were just trying to go to work and support our families when they burnt when they hung us from trees and burned us alive 
Did we get any help for that? I'm going to show you one thing and then I'm going to let you go. Give me Matthew 11 to 28. I know I'll help with you and I said it last time, but I'm going to give you this one scripture. Because God, what y'all need to realize, God is calling you. You understand? This right here is not a life that was meant for us. Okay? We are God's chosen people. The only reason why we go through this is because of our transgressions. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. This is what God says. This is what Christ, the black Messiah, said. He said, come unto him, they that labor and are heavy laden. Meaning what? You're heavy laden with affliction, with burdens. Come on. And I will give you rest. God will give you rest. How? Because you're going to understand that there's more than this, the streets of Chicago. There's more than Chicago and Springfield. Do you know we can really establish and rebuild our communities, a better life for our children, a better life for our daughters in this present day? So he said, come unto me, ye that are heavy laden, and rest with me. Come on. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. See that? Listen to what it says, brother, because you said you was going to give us a call. You said you was going to give us a call. Read that one more time. Take my yoke upon you. You know what? Take this Bible and what? And learn of me. And learn of me. Learn of Christ. Learn how to get out of this situation. Christ gave us uh, tools to free our minds and to free ourselves from these conditions. All of this right here is a product of the mind. You understand? Come on. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. You see that? God says he's meek and lowly of heart. And we shall find rest to our souls. Why? Because our souls have no rest in the streets of Chicago. Our souls have no rest in the streets of New York. Our souls have no rest in all of America. What's your name? Cole? Paul. Paul. Okay. Paul Saul. Okay. All praise. I'm Judah, by the way. You ever heard this information before? You said a little bit. What you know? What have you heard? About you being an Israelite? Yeah, about the Bible. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, so you know a little bit something about the Bible. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Who did Christ die for? And what is the significance? Who is all of us? What's that? What people? Who is us people? Be more specific. Who is us people? What are you talking about? Human beings on earth. So all nations. All nations. Okay. You go to church? You do what church you go to? Okay. What church is that, by the way, if you don't mind me asking? Life Center Church of Deliverance. Okay, okay. So you said all nations, right? Let me ask you a question. If Christ walked this earth today, would he agree with you? You said he would. Okay, how long you been going to that church? Six months, six months. Give me Matthew chapter 15. You know what I want, right? Matthew chapter 15. Let me show you something. I'm going to show you something. You believe in God, right? Obviously, because you go to church, right? I'm going to show you something. Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, verse 21, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast. So here we have Jesus Christ walking with his disciples, like you mentioned. He had 12 disciples that he handpicked, right? Out of the coast of Tyre and Zidon. That's the west coast of the land of Israel, okay? And it says, there came unto him a woman of the nation of Canaan, okay? So this is an African woman, right? Read. And cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. So she asked Christ to have mercy on her. And she acknowledged him as the son of David. Okay? Watch this. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. So she wanted Christ. She came to Christ to help her with her daughter. And to have mercy on her. Right? Now, the common uh, knowledge of the world is that Christ is a merciful king. Right? He's very merciful. And he came for all people. Right? 
Watch this. So she worshiped and she acknowledged this man. Did Christ do a lot of miracles? Like what? Can you name some? Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. With leprosy, right? He healed him, cleansed his skin from leprosy. Many of those things, cure ailments, yeah, all of those things, right? So here, so here, right, her, her garment, right? So here we have a situation where you have an African woman that is asking Christ to heal her daughter. That's vexed with a devil, right? Today, a lot of people would call that a mental disability, a psychosis, right? Watch this, read. But he answered her not a word. He did what? He answered her not a word. You know what that means? No, nah, he didn't. That's not what that means. It says he answered her not a word. If somebody asked you a question and you didn't answer them at all, even though you heard it, what is that called? Ignoring. Why did Christ ignore her? Huh? No, he did ignore her. That's what it just said. That's what the Bible says. See, this is the thing. See, this is the thing. We cannot try to interpret or come up with a, a facet in our minds of what we want the book to say. The book says what it says. You understand? Like, if you read any other book, right? Let's say you wanted to learn how to drive. When you read the book, the, the Illinois driver's book, right? To learn how to drive and then you go take the test. There's no private interpretation to it. People can't come to that book and say, well, I think this mean this and I think this mean that. Then go take the test and then just pass it on whatever the hell they think or they want to do, right? They say, no, that don't mean that. This means this. This is what the law is, right? So likewise, when we come to the book, the Bible, we cannot imagine things based on our own theology or our own facet, right? We have to acknowledge the book as it is written. So it says he answered her not a word, which means he ignored her. It just is what it is. That's what it means. But watch this. Watch this. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away. Wait. So this is not Christ by himself ignoring her. Now the disciples themselves, because remember, they followed Christ, right, for years. And they were going around healing people along with them, watching the miracles and everything he did. But they can't read Christ's mind. So why would they also say, Lord, send her away. Get her away from us. If he came for all nations. Because she's a nation, right? That's not of the nation of Israel. So why would they do that? Huh? My guess is good of mine. I don't have a guess. I can show you in the Bible. I'm going to show you. Okay, I get it. I know. Watch this. Read. Saying, send her away, for she cried after us. Now she's coming after us. You didn't ignore her. Now she's coming to us for help. Lord, get rid of her. But there's a common thought in the world that Christ died for all nations. But here you have a nation or a woman from a different nation that's crying for help that he refused to help. Read. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Read that part again. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What did Christ just say? He said, he is not sent, but, meaning only, to the house of Israel. Meaning what? God only sent him to the house of Israel. That's right. Do you understand that? But in the church, they teach something different. Why is that? And mind you, this is what the whole world believes. You understand? Now, is this just one scripture I'm taking out of context? You think so? No? Watch this. Give me Romans 9. What I'm going to show you is that the things that you have been learning is not true. What you have been learning, excuse me, and slavery was it okay for us or lawful for us to read and write it wasn't right so how did we become Christian
say what? Okay, so in slavery, what was our condition in slavery? I mean, I'm kind of giving it to you right there. We were slaves, right? So that means somebody possessed us and they had ownership of us. So we had no free reign to do whatever we wanted to do. We had to do what was pleasing to our slave master. And our slave master said it was not pleasing to him for us to be able to read and write. So that means there was it was impossible for us to go into this book and read it and become a Christian. Which means somebody had to teach us Christianity. You understand? So, who taught us this? Yeah, who taught us? Your mama taught you. Who taught your mama? Uh, who taught her? And uh, who taught her? And where that come from? Slavery. 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 You think the same people that did this to us was going to tell you the truth about God? No, right? So why do we still follow it? You said what? No, the Bible ain't been changed around. Our minds have been changed around. The Bible hadn't. Uh -huh. It was only, right, it was translated and some words do have a different force in a different language. But the, the essence of what's written here is still applicable. It's still the same. For example, if I tell you don't commit murder, what does that mean? Don't kill nobody. But that ain't how you say it in Hebrew, but you got the same information. So why would we harp on a language versus the information? You understand? It's still the same. Because guess what? You don't know Hebrew. The Lord knew when we went into our captivities, we we're going to learn a different language, right? You understand? Just like the so-called Hispanics. When the conquistadors came and conquered them, now they didn't speak Spanish at first. They speak Hebrew. But now they speak Spanish. If you go to Italy, you speak Latin. So your language become the language of your captor. So it was necessary for us, for the Bible to be written in a different language. Give me that, Isaiah 28. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So the knowledge and the doctrine is referring to the Bible. They that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the best, meaning what? Breast, meaning what? You have to be given the basics first. When you give a child, a baby, a newborn, when you feed it, you don't feed it meat or vegetables. You feed it milk because that's what is nece necessary for it at that time. Right? Read on. For precept must be upon precept. Which is a law. A precept is a law. Come on. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Verse upon verse. Read. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. A little in the Old Testament, a little in the New Testament. A little in the book of Isaiah, a little in the book of uh, Ezekiel. That's how you get the understanding. That's how you get that milk. And you grow from it, right? But watch this. For with stammering lips. For with what? For with stammering lips. For with stammering lips. Come on. And another tongue. And a what? And another tongue. And another tongue. You know what another tongue is? Another language. Another language. So the things that you witnessed or you said, oh yeah, that Bible has been written in different languages. God said that's how he was going to teach you. Through a different language. So that you would be able to receive what is coming out of here. So don't get deterred about a language. Language is nothing. It's very uh, minor. You know what I mean? It's very minor. Don't harp on the language. Harp on the information that's coming out. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is